Welcome. Welcome everyone to our Sunday evening service. We're very blessed for you to tune in and thank you so much for welcoming me in your home. And you know, this month, I'm always looking forward for December. You know, as you guys know, my birthday's coming up next week. We have Christmas. We have, you know, I went to the Falcon Middle School band concert this past week and it was, it was amazing because I'm going to be going to the orchestra concert next week at Falcon. And, you know, I always like music and we celebrate the birth of Christ and it's just, we continue to grow with our faithfulness. We continue to keep pressing forward. So before we get into the announcement, I want to ask the book of James to open up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. No matter what we go through, no matter how hard our day has been, we always have you to take care of us and protect us and to show us love. We thank you for all that you do and all that you are. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And it's all in his name. Amen. Amen. Now, um, before we guys know, we are going to make some changes uh, next year. We're only going to stay here in the living room for two more months. And I got to know that the good Lord is going to call us to another destination, another location or apartment. So um, we're looking forward to for a new chapter. I know we've been here for two years uh, from November 23rd, 2020. So the Lord sees our faithfulness, but we're going to continue to keep pressing forward. Now, just a really quick announcement, guys. Um, we are going to, um, uh, today, we're going to do a new sermon series called Faith, Hope, and Love. So I really want to focus on gifts. And today, I want to talk about the gift of faith. Next week, I want to talk about the gift of hope. On the candlelight service, we're going to talk about the gift of love. And uh, Diana, Diana Acosta, she's going to be doing worship with the violin. And our candlelight service on December 18th. And then on December 17th, we're going to have our, uh, it's a special service. We'll have Abby Cabelga. We're going to be speaking, and then we're going to do service on the 25th. So I know Ariana, we, we did a video last night with Ariana, so we're going to do a Christmas video as well. Of course, the New Year video of Michaela, we're going to be doing a, a New Year video as well. And, and I don't know, I really want to focus uh, the series on gifts. And if, if you guys remember the, the famous scripture, First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, is faith, hope, and love, a greater basis is love. So we really want to target that scripture and just to uh, the whole theme of the sermon on gifts, that we're going to focus on you know, on Christmas, you know, on the birth of Christ, how Jesus was born in the manger, and the wise men that followed the stars, and how the story, you know, when an angel approached to Joseph and, and Mary, and uh, we're going to focus on on that target on on, on the gifts. So if you guys know, today we're going to go part one, we're going to talk about the gift of faith, or part one. And we're going to go focus on two chapters that I really were very fascinated. Well, well, when I go back, looking at this chapter, I didn't know that the angel appeared to Mary. The angel appeared to, to Joseph. We're going to focus on that. So um, if you have your Bible, Brady, go. Oh, no. Um, uh, I want to have James to read our, our, our scripture for the month. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Amen. And you know, love is such an important, vital part in, in our walk with the Lord. It's to love what you do, love all things. The greater love has no man to live and lay down his life for his friend. And as one of our, the, our, our closing sermon we're going to do on December 18, on the candlelight service, is a gift of love. And I really want to focus on the gift. And you guys remember James 1, 17, that every good gift from above comes directly from the Father's hand. And, and I just feel that this gift is so valuable. Everybody likes to have gifts, even in Christmas or your birthday or anniversary or anything. You always like to have that gift. When someone gives you a gift, it, it gives you a little sense of you know, like wonder or curiosity. Oh, wow, I got a gift from a friend. I want to know what this gift is. I want to open up this gift. So um, let's go into these two chapters that um, with Joseph and Mary, that their faith was tested. Their faith was tested, and I want to ask uh, James, uh, we're going to read um, Luke chapter 1, verse 26, 34. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at this at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. 
But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? Now, I want to give you guys a quick, you know, note right here. Imagine, you know, uh, as Mary, and, and I studied this, Mary was in the age between 12 to 14 years old. She was just a preteen. Now, an angel appeared to, to Mary, and, you know, I, I, I'm giving it was nighttime, and, you know, it's just a season, now, you know, just seeing the angel, uh, Mary, you, you're going to be uh, uh, receive a son, the savior, the king. Of the world now, Mary was a little bit confused though. Like, how can I be beast if I am a virgin? I, I've not been married though. And but, but then the angel said, that, But you're gonna have a son, which you're gonna call his name Jesus. Now, imagine in, in her mind being a you know a preteen or a 14 year old, you know, she has so many emotions and just wondering how this be. Now, if we continue reading on, on Mary's side of the story, uh, let's go to. Um, now, oh, I can't see that. Now, the, the, now the, let's see what the angel when, when it appears to Joseph. Let's go to Matthew chapter one, verse eighteen to twenty-five. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit, because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. Yes. Now imagine if you go to the other side of the story. So we went into the first story uh, when an angel appeared to Mary. When remember we talked about how James said in scripture that that, you know, this is a, the mother is going to be born a child, the savior, the king. Now, and then you go to the other side of the story when the angel appears to Joseph. Now, Joseph, I'm, I'm going to imagine he was just a regular carpenter. He was just a regular man, you know, um, just being obedient. Even man would have a heart, a humble heart, obedient. Remember the Bible says in Isaiah 119, if you're willing and obedient, you need to get a good land. So when, when Joseph has a sincere heart to, to arrive, to, to, to take Mary, you know, um, but what the, I, I can imagine that they have doubt. You know, when Joseph and Mary, they have doubt. How can this be? How can it be a child? As you remember, that back then, you know, if, if you look at the Bible days, you know, it's, 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 it's called adultery. You know, if someone is, 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 is Mary, uh, set out of marriage, though, something like that, that it might be called infidelity or it might be called adultery. But remember, Mary was, was born through the Holy Spirit. Oh, man, I'm so sorry. Uh, Mary um, was a complete son through the Holy Spirit, which is named Jesus. There was one scripture, um, I don't like this. Like this. Let's go, um, James, read Luke 1 37. For no word from God will ever fail. Nothing shall be impossible. Nothing should be impossible with him, the creator that created us. Let's go return to the creator that created us. And now let's go to, to Luke chapter 2, talk, uh, talk about King Harold. Now King Harold wanted to kill all the, the babies, the, the newborn child. But let's, let's, let's read here in Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, 
the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. Now, this is a time when uh, the king, the uh, censor, and I remember, uh, confirm me if I'm wrong, I did read this uh, back in the scripture that King Herod wanted to, uh, I think he was angry, he was upset, who is this king, who is this, we'll who call it Lord, and he, he ordered uh, the guards to go and kill all the, the children, I believe so, but then I believe when Mary and Joseph, by faith, they, 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 they travel, they're, they're in hiding, they're looking for a place for the, for the manger, for, for the, this person will be born. Let's continue reading from Luke chapter 2, verse 7 to 11. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Amen. You know, I always like Luke chapter 2, verse 11. This is the day that the Savior was born in, in David's city in Bethlehem because I believe that when, when that faith that was given, you know, when the Lord gave faith to Joseph and Mary, have faith in me. The Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight. Because when they were traveling, they were looking and they were trying to find a place to set a child to be born. And, and so, so we are all beneficiaries of, of, of faith. I'm so sorry. Um, um, where we are beneficiaries of God's faith. We continue to live with faithfulness. Continue to we go back to the story. Mary and Joseph have faith. Uh, they, they, the Romans chapter 10 verse 17 by faith is hearing the word of God when an angel approaches them uh, uh, they told him to give him guidance to where to take the child to Bethlehem to for a second year away from King Herod and I believe let's continue um, uh, in the scripture reading uh, 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 James you can read um have you ever thought uh, where faith comes from in James read Romans chapter 12 verse 3? For by the grace given, given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. Yeah, our faith is given by God. You know, faith is not something that you can't unwrap. It's given by our Heavenly Father. So we live by, by character. We live by, by seeking Him through the Scripture. Just like if you go back to biblical days when Joseph and Mary, who, who brought this child into this world, and they, they see how they were obedient, they listened to the Heavenly Father. That's why I admired Joseph. Joseph was a kind man, was a humble man. And he, he could easily divorce Mary, but what happened in the story that that they, they, they live a faith when they do a faith walkers. And let's continue in our scripture reading here. Uh, and we, if you guys remember at Matthew chapter 13, verse 31, 32, talk about the mustard seed. If you have faith, Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, if you have faith like a mustard seed, you can tell this mountain to move. And I believe that we have faith like a mustard seed. If you guys know like a mustard seed, it's very small, very tiny. And yet we, we live with that faithfulness, faith like a mustard seed. And let's continue here. Um, James, we look, chapter 1, verse 38. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Yes. Did you know if God calls you uh, to, to do it, he will give you faith to do it. Now, I want to give you guys an example. And Jane, I'm gonna have you, uh, you know, jump in. Now, Jane, let me ask you a question, though. Um, what do What do you think when God calls you to do? What do I think God calls me to do? Yeah, to do. Well, the first and main thing is is to be faithful, you know, and to believe in in Christ. Yeah. That's the main thing, I think. Yeah, like when sometimes when God gives me that faith, you know, to start this church, though, and. And it's very challenging though, because I don't have the resources, I don't have the finances, 
for the people, but God always make his promises that he will provide for me people to help me gather the resources. So, and see, it, if God calls you to do it, he'll give you faith to do it. So, and I like your answer, James, so that we have to live with, with faithfulness to the Lord. And remember, we have a Bible says in Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a soft mind. If you go back to the story with Joseph and, and Mary, how God uh, told them to do this, and they'll give them faith to do this. And now imagine, you know, being a Mary, uh, a Mary shoe and Joseph, you know, they didn't realize, you know, what the, the big blessing, you know, the Redeemer is going to come, you know, to save this world from our sin, because when they're walking by faith, and, and they have to go leave the land, you know, with King Herod, they have to find a plate, and they found the manger. And let's, uh, let, let's continue here, and Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Yes, I want to encourage you guys. You know, I believe when in, in the beginning of the Christmas story that they have a peace in their heart, they trust in God, they're, they're not afraid. And that's, that's, that's the last inclusion of uh, Scripture, James, right here. Oh, oh man, my phone's going. Psalms 56 3. Yes. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. And I believe when an angel appeared to Joseph and Mary, they were a big part of God's plan. They were a big part of God's destiny. They brought a child through the work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and we remember of a gift of faith. Because like uh, James was reading here in, in Romans chapter 12, verse 3, our faith comes from our Heavenly Father. It's a gift. That's why today's uh, sermon was about a gift of faith. And I, a little bit, I do apologize. I'm still trying to get my sermon you know, straight, so, but, but I know that if we continue to live with faith on it, I know Life Purpose Church is in the season right now where, where, where we're going we're gonna to be lo relocating to another place later on in, in February, though, but we're, we're going to have faith where God is here, and Jane, I, like, I want to encourage you that this is, uh, remember uh, this day that you spoke here in this living room, God gave you favor. God give you faith, just like he did with Joseph and, and, and Mary, so I know it doesn't seem like it right now, though, but God will continue to bless you, to, to wash over you, according to the scripture, though, because if we look at the Christmas season, though, you know, about gifts, you know, we think about gifts, about material stuff, or, you know, you know, fancy, you know, jewelry or possession, but we have the gift of faith from our Heavenly Father, just like when Joseph and Mary when they were walking in, in, you know, to, to David City, they have faith from their Heavenly Father. But they have no idea, they have no destination or no guidance, but they, they rely on God and the angel to, to guide them. I like what the Bible says in Psalms chapter 91, verse 11, for God will charge his angel to watch and protect you, though. And I believe, young people, if we live with faithfulness, if we live with a heart of gratitude, it gives me insurance that when we go back to the scripture, though, that in Luke 1 37, nothing shall not be impossible with God. Remember this you cannot unwrap faith. Faith is not something you can unwrap. But this gift that we're going to continue, with, we're going to be talking about the gift of hope and the gift of love. Because our greatest gift is salvation, it's Jesus who died on the cross for our sin. And I want to encourage you guys in this Christmas season, though, surrender your, your heart to Jesus. and Man, I remember a, a song that Falcon Middle School, they were playing, I think on Thursday, I think, I think it was Thursday or Friday, I don't know, Thursday, but they were talking about the song. That I have it on, on my, I posted it on YouTube, it's a beautiful song about the Christmas season, though. But I want to encourage you guys, as we close this message, though, I want to encourage you guys in this season of Christmas to not to look at the, you know, all the, the secular stuff of Christmas, but focus on the message, the gift of faith, which is Jesus. If, if Joseph and Mary were obedient and listening to the to the angel, and I know that we can listen to our Heavenly Father with the Holy Spirit that lives in our heart. Amen. I want to ask James to close his prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this word. Just remind us, Lord, during Christmas that we keep Christ in Christmas and that we appreciate that gift that he gave us on Calvary, Lord. And we thank you for it all. We thank you for this word again. And I just, I hope uh, more people can please take advantage of the, the grace 
and the faith that you have for us, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you guys all. We may have an early service next week. I you guys know it's my birthday on December 11th. So I'll keep you guys updated. Well, God bless you guys. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Next week, we're all going to talk about the gift of hope. Right, well, God bless you guys. Take care.